All right. Um, Tal, are you aware of any organizational updates? Um, nothing profound enough to mention, I don't think. Um, Bianca and I had a call earlier about the new mm -hmm. CRM and the progress on that front, but that's not really a stage, but it's, it's ongoing. She's doing an amazing job of solving and working out how it works and trying to facilitate. Um, I don't know. Is is there an arter about? Is which arter is that? Too many arters. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. That's me. I had to join um, to start the call. No problem. Um, your audio is sounding much better today, Malivika. So yeah, I realized that my laptop was causing issues, so now I'm joining as author on my laptop and then as me on my phone and connecting phone. to and just getting a better connection of it. Yeah. Yeah. Maya does that. The anyway, sound um, is much better. Much, much, better much better. Thing. Yeah. So I don't think there's anything else that I know of on that front, no. So all right. Want the teams if you want. I've just been in right. uh the ties call. I don't know if they're gonna join or not. Okay. Um I I I guess there's uh that means there's nothing specific under communications or HR as well, right? Yeah, well, the HR communications, like I said, we've been just, um, the the CRMs ongoing, being tested, um, and we, so that's kind of a HR onboarding right. organization. Um, we're gonna, yeah. we're probably gonna have another call yeah. with someone with Bianca and um, I can't remember her name right now. Shirley. Someone else. Yeah. Shirley. Yeah, Bianca and Shirley. We're gonna have a discussion and see if we can further bed down approaches um, mm -hmm. but other than that no I don't really have anything right now I'm still looking at a few things all right yeah thanks Tyler I was just gonna add um, the yeah specifically the onboarding the onboarding stuff so I think what Shirley will be looking at so and we've reached out uh, to a few people who I think were doing this before so um, would be good to find out what's happened in the past all right sounds good Thank you both for the updates. Uh, moving on, um, Maya, how's it going with risk factors? Um, it's going well. Uh, we built uh, the classifier and managed to extract uh, results. And uh, so basically, I will uh, take care about uh, of the annotation uh, job on that side. But our main blocker now, and I'm really happy mm -hmm. that uh, Lukas is on call, is actually... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's Lucas. Sounds like it's Lucas. You're about to blame Lucas for your blockers. <laughs> uh, version 22, we need a ULMS there. Like, it's we really now, our progress depends on that majorly. Did I say something? <laughs> so, uh, it, it, now it's my part to present, uh, like uh, to talk about uh, search engine section or? I mean, uh, you, uh, let, like, let Malavika decide that. I think it was more <laughs> risk factor as like prodding for a response specifically to version 22 yeah, and right. UMLS, so, so. yeah no there is a specific question indeed when or uh, do uh if there are people from infrastructure like when do you think that version 22 together with ulms will be ready for the further processing because our code and our advancement do depend on that there's a Slavak here or not? Okay, so uh, in uh, I can speak for myself in the sense that okay, I had a delay this week working on CSV19, the whole version, like the the uh, uh, entity recognition, and uh, NER, and all the stuff that like we had in data frames. Uh, we are converging this now, like on the level of sentences, sections, and entire docu documents into something that can we feed it directly into Dataverse and then to MongoDB. 
so that uh, there will be no data frames because actually data frame uh, were, were actually at this point a kind of a uh, obstacle because it, it costs too much to process it in, in, within the data frames. And uh, now, I, just because I, I, I didn't have much time this week, that's delayed, that's why. But uh, the, the, like, to, honestly, I'm working on uh, to, to push it forward, but yeah. Do we have any, like, at least approximations? Approximation would be that V19 should be uh, like this uh, uh, preprocess V19 with lemmas, etc. Should be, uh, I mean, I hope to, to get it at this weekend, like uh, to, to get the code running tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow, and at the weekend, depending on how uh, how uh, fast I will be in fitting with fitting in, into Dataverse. Uh, it will be in Dataverse, and then you can. Uh, just do it whatever you want. And then V22, depending on how much differences is between V19 and V22, I can, uh, once I have this code uh, functional uh, running, I can adapt this for V22, but will cost also something like one or two days, depending on how much difference is there. Maybe just two hours, just two. I, I don't know actually, because I didn't inspect, uh, I haven't inspected, uh, V22 in regards to differences between uh, V22 and V19. So. Right. Sorry about, um, sorry about that, but... <laughs> uh, it's okay, uh, but like, um, no pressure, simply our submission uh, relies on that. Yeah, I mean, Sorry. okay. <laughs> I, I'm aware well, it sounds like a little bit of pressure. Like yeah. a bit. <laughs> no, I'm aware of it, but I have like, my work, my PhD, my 10,000 other things. And it's like very, I mean, uh, yeah, it costs time. And now it's like difficult to par like to delegate this because actually I already delegated the, those sections and entire documents and notebooks to other persons. And now I'm merging them into one. Got it. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's the point that like, yeah, I mean like, no, I mean, you need to, Wait, it's it's okay no worries like it's okay okay i got it i'll update uh i'll update the team accordingly thank you so much that's it for me you're welcome all right thanks maya i do have a question lucas but we'll come to it when we're talking about the data sets and search engine and stuff so do you have a question yeah a, a general question not not really related to this uh, but I'll come to that in a bit when, we're, when okay. we're doing your team's updates. In the order, yeah. All right. Um, I'm not sure if Dan uh, would be able to join today's call. Um, we had um, another internal VT call earlier and he said it was quite busy today. Um, so in general, I don't think there are any major updates uh, for VT. Um, except that in uh, contradictory claims work, we are um, we are completed with phase one of uh, annotation work. And uh, Tyler, I don't know if you would be happy or enraged to hear this, but we're doing a bit more of streamlined process this time around, um, where we just did a pilot mm -hmm. oh, in phase no. one. <laughs> oh, okay, then. that sounds about right. Yeah, um, so the pilot went well. We had a few discrepancies between annotators and we sort of discussed and resolved those discrepancies and we'll now be going on to uh, release more uh, data for them to annotate and measure the inter-annotator agreement and so on. Um, so that's where we're at with contradictory claims. Um, maybe Dan can add more updates in the sheet later when he's free about other streams of work on VT. Uh, moving on to Thais, um, I don't think we have Christine or Demi. I, I was just in the I was just in the Thais call, and they now oh, have right. they now have a daily update sheet for Thais work. So I'm just going to put a link for that 
in the current one and then hopefully at some point someone will either transfer it over or just use that as a reference point. And I'm just wondering if does VT or RISC have a similar system where they kind of document what's going on in a more asynchronous way? Um, I'll check on that with Dan. I really don't know about VT. Maya, uh, is there some um, daily tracker or something that you're maintaining for risk? Uh, we don't have daily calls at the moment. Uh, last few calls we had like four people on there. Uh, I'm in touch. Uh, I'm in touch with the team though, and I kind of know approximately where we stay and uh, what's left to do and what's done. Huh? It wasn't a case of like, it has to be a daily update, but more of a, a documented update that's at least somewhat centralized and regularly updated is more the question. Ah, th there should be a document that I have to fill. Do I understand this correctly? Yeah, oh, I'm not saying no, no, you no. have to. I'm saying, are you doing anything like that to make your life easier no, to track what no, everyone's doing? No, no, but I know like I, I have like kind of my own document where I know who is on what and what's going on and what is, what is the next step. Cool. I mean, that's fine. It's just a case of um, now because no, I'm no, not it's through a, ties. No, no, it's okay. Even though I if was I, if, uh, if sick gone, for a couple I've, of days, it's okay. Yeah, because I've gone through, it's not that, like I said, you don't have to necessarily update every day. It just, it's one of them things that um, when it comes to catching people up on what people are doing, it's obviously, it's, He's like call. It's good if people are recording calls, but at the same time, if you can just scan through a document and work it out in five minutes what people are working on, um, it's a it's a useful and it's also useful for over time seeing like where stages are moving through. It don't have to, it won't have to be every day. Just I was just wondering if there were something similar you guys were doing, noticing that Ty's kind of taken what General's doing and using a similar thing, but with like the subtasks they're dealing with, and it might be a method to be able to. To, for us I, to have I, a better I, system to track. I got it. Um, actually, like, first of all, I think that our channel is pretty represent representative in that sense. It's true. Your, your channel's pretty active still. So, yeah. I mean, the ones I see. There's probably other ones I don't see. Uh, there are a few that you probably don't see. But, like, the main updates and the major everything happens pretty much in a task risk. So, uh it basically allows pretty much to understand what we struggle with, where we stay on, and what do we have like done, more or less. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything you wanted to uh, call out, Tyler, in terms of uh, updates from Tyus? Anything that was interesting? Um or help that they needed? Um, well, they were talking about how Docano's working somewhat um, for some things. They were asking questions about whether Elasticsearch is going to get updated. I'm not sure if Elasticsearch is going to get updated or not, because it said it's still on version 9, and they were curious if it was going to get updated or if it was going to be um, basically left. I assumed Elasticsearch was going to get updated, but I'm, that was an assumption based on... I figured it was still useful. I mean, I like, did that get Sorry, updated? Bob. Sorry, Lucas. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry for uh, interrupting you, but actually, Elasticsearch is quite important, at least for search machine, uh, for semantic search as well, as a kind of a pre filtering tool. So, for sure, we are going to feed. Uh, Elastic search with V19 and V22 once they are ready. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, uh, there is no way that, I mean, like, at least from the perspective how search engines should look like, uh, it's, it will be forever because it's a quite simple kind of a filter to, to get the, the most relevant docs just based on, on the strings. So. I mean, that was basically my assumption that 
Elasticsearch was still useful for a number of different reasons, which is why it yeah, was yeah, intended to be both, kept. I, yeah. I, I assumed it was still useful, so it was going to be kept. And that's what I've basically, I basically said that in the call, that I think it's yeah. useful. I can't imagine it being depreciated for any reason right now. So mm, maybe not for high-end high end, uh, purposes, but as a first step to, to get some approximation or yeah exactly they've been using it for extraction um, sample size extraction and sent a uh, paragraph data level stuff that's what they were wanting for and that's exactly what it seems to be really good for so i kind of figured that i just yeah. that was the only real thing um uh they were not they were struggling to update the twitter stuff into dataverse that might be something they need reaching out to and help with that's uh knitting was mentioning that they were not able to update the twitter Pull, the pull down data from Twitter into Dataverse. I'm not really sure what the problem was there. Um, and I think that's about it, yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, is this this is um, Twitter data in relation to dyes? Because I knew yeah. that Ethernetin was working on something for um, VT. But this is interesting. It's kind of, it's it's kind of, it's spilling up. It's, yeah, it's kind of one of the tasks that is being used in both transmission because they were using it about finding out what people are talking about, and then they were talking about sentiment analysis around it. So it is kind of covering some of the sentiment analysis Twitter reference stuff as well. So it is one of those situations where it's kind of doing multiple things for multiple teams. But you know, we're going to have that because we're not all we're all working on the same problem in multiple angles. So occasionally, some of the yeah. angles are going to cross over. Cool stuff. Uh, all right, thanks, Tyler, for the updates. Um, so uh, we'll skip Discovery Engine. Is there anything specific, Lucas, for us to uh, address around the search engine work? Nothing specific. I just need, need more time. I mean, like more time, a couple of days, just to get uh, get those V19, V22 done. And then well, when, you, when you say you need more time, is it you need more personal time or you no, need no, it's more, like, uh, more people no, time? More time for myself because now yeah. actually I'm merging the things that uh, other persons did. And uh, it's quite difficult. I mean, like now it would be because now uh, it uh, would cost more time to, to redelegate those things yeah, to, ca to catch people up than it would do to just do it yeah, yeah. i understand okay all right thanks lucas yep. um we i believe we're still looking for um someone to lead um task geo right I, I'm kind of getting the impression that Tasgio's role is probably going to be superseded into the task. Well, it's not really a task yet. It's data. What's it called? Right in Tasgio and the work uh, the people did there, uh, the, our infrastructure is kind of subsuming all exactly of the same. Results. The infrastructure, the infrastructure system, sort of eating what. Geo was doing yes. and, and expanded into it. So the data hub team is kind of, and the automated uh, the automated crawlers that are pulling in data that you're curating by people. Um, that is pretty much eating what t Team Geo were doing. So to the point where mm -hmm. Geo might end up the people. If anyone, I don't think anyone is working actively on Geo's side. I can't really tell. But if anyone is working on that, they're probably going to be ended up either assisting on the data, the data hub, the hashtag data hub team, or they, they'll get absorbed into other teams if they need to do stuff. Okay. Um, did I get that right? Data hub? Hub, H-U-B, sorry, oh, accent. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's basically an extract, it's a, it's a, it's a subsection of, um, the, yeah, the, the infrastructure team. It's run, but it's K, uh, okay. K, Kira seems to be running it mostly yes. right now. Yeah, um, yeah Kira Goncharov, Goncharova. Yeah, she's seen, and it's and I, I won't, I won't, I won't mind. But in the next few days, Team Geo will probably be um, depre well, in the next week, so it'll probably be depreciated as a, an old tape label and. Infrastructure will probably talk about that. We'll work out when that official, yeah, because Team Geo 
doesn't have a leader that seems to be a team lead that seems to be actively involved partially because i think they're really busy and partially because infrastructure's eating their work mm-hmm. which is always going to happen at some point i mean anton would probably give you a better idea of what's going on there all right uh thanks tyler um all right data sets uh how is it going okay. anton for data sets we we have a lot of things going on pretty much in the process of ingesting all of the covid-19 related data sets on github uh that's why our data hub team that's responsible for curating the metadata for all of those data sets will have lots of work to do so anybody who is kind of don't know what to do right now there is lots of work to automate the metadata curation process so mm-hmm. please hop it into data hub pin cura and just see, see see what you can do today and there is a lot of things to do like tomorrow uh currently we have like 5000 different like files so more than 100 specific data sets and the work is not exactly just kind of like engineering or something we will mm-hmm. need to contact the authors of, of all of these different repos uh so there is a lot of like communication needs as well so again it's yeah huge i, f- I figured it's i figured at some point there would be like communication partnership discussions happening um yeah. i mean i yeah, came across so, one earlier the covid tracking project which seems to be using a large set of american data that's kind of correlating it all together and it was one of the things i've just come across and i've put it in the partnership channel but i was going to reach out to the t- team the data sets and see if they're using if they're pulling from the same place or if we need to get in touch with them and cross over because they seem to be doing some of the same things we are but very much american focused and again if we can uh, if we don't have to duplicate the work it's always going to be more efficient again the idea that uh, again within corona why we have the strategy of like hoarding all of the data sets that are publicly available so we don't rely on anybody else down the line uh but it is create opportunity to also reach out to those people for collaboration as well and then you kind of like boom your data sets are over here ready to go you just need to you know let, let's do some processing on, on that end of it on the why so we become like truly that platform for for open data science for covid-19 so i'm super happy happy about that so and again this is all consequence of a couple of days earlier we finally did this upgrade uh just on server side so now our data says that coronavirus.org is able to consume all of that data like programmatically so again huge huge win i mean like consequences of of that huge win a couple of days ago so i'm super happy about it sounds good all right um thanks for that anton um was there anything you wanted to add from the infra side or was was that it well, for for infra we still like uh, so for example our mongodb cluster will get updates soon as well we just do everything right like backing up first yada yada but like right now mongodb is kind of uh, it's like it uses like cheaper nodes so our bill is lower but we already like with the usage we need to do an upgrade so we'll do it kind of in the next week or so when there'll be like good good timing and then our mongodb cluster will be like super fast and all of the issues that we had before when some people complaining like all data pools are not quick enough all of them will will, will be gone um also uh regarding like earlier questions for example elastic search etc all of that will be there this is like a kind of a basic blocks fundamental blocks of building any data pipelines so elastic search will get updated eventually just elastic search is all about indices and indices are those let's say umls entities or some other things that again eventually will get updated to a most recent version and it's all up and running so so far for example in our mongodb 
I think tw version 22 is the latest like ingestion we did. The same thing in terms of like raw data for Elasticsearch, it just indices are not updated yet. But the moment that is done, boom, everything is you know up to speed again. So we're already in that stage that what we had a couple of weeks before when every time a new version from Kaggle was, was dropping and there were a lot of manual work to do. It was like this craziness. Mm -hmm. Now it's all manual. Already, yes, like this time we're kind of like, we're already almost ready to be in rolling release ready, you know, because I think Kaggle update, not Kaggle, the AI2 folks updating almost like daily at this point. Yeah. So from server side of things, we kind of ready to actually do all of this. It's just only like the indexes will be lagging behind a little bit because again, they're computationally costly. Everything else, we will be ready to, to be like- Have, on have we decided list. if the, the computationally costly tasks are gonna be done daily? Are they gonna be clustered as a group? on a less common time zone, you know, every three days, every five days, every week, whatever. Is that something we are going to, yeah, well, oh, right do, we, now do we have the, do we have the hardware and the ability to do the costly intensive stuff every day? Do we need to do that or not? Right. Like, for example, like if, if you wait a couple of days, a new bunch of updates come in, then you do it that time, nothing actually changes, right? Like that yeah. much. That's what I'm figuring. Is, is is there a need to do that hard work when is is like is the work is the value worth the is the, is so the right, effort worth the pay the payoff? Is what I'm wondering. Right. So right now the decision is like V19 is our stable considered to be stable release. This is the one that broke all of the changes from like pre uh, like V12 was the last one of the old set of data schema by AI to post like v15 19 and the rest by the way they're not incremental anymore as well <laughs> so it becomes a mess situation but anyways so right now v19 is a stable version all of like v21 22 and now 25 they're all considered to be incremental because again it's just more papers some papers got added some papers got deleted no breaking changes for us it's all kind of the same from infrastructure perspective so we just kind of fixed V19 right now. The moment when we get our, this pipeline to, to build all of those indices are up and running, not manually, but like automatically, then we will just like rerun at that time will be the next stable release. And then when we see that, oh, like too many updates to data sets, rerun it again, boom, another stable release, et cetera. So we will have our own schedule that is at this point probably will be like weekly or something just to yeah. not yeah. Have um, that, crazy... that, I mean, like i said it makes sense because like i said ai too sometimes realize that there's two duplicate files or you know there's two two versions of the same thing or and it's these like are they going to be like research time research and process terms game breaking or system breaking no they're not they can be tolerated in small doses across periods so doing the very very hard computational work of all that indices and all the the, the vector based stuff doing that every day feels like is it worth the yes effort? absolutely and and also we're working on like to cleaning some of those like issues upstream so at the moment at the point of ingestion of data if we have like duplicates etc uh again that is uh like we have a dedicated person, Klobuchar is working on this data verification type of initiative. So eventually we will be even more, like we will be less dependent from external data providers. So all of our researchers within like our task teams, like call them labs, they will have like, here is a data source, everything is hosted on our end, everything is available, yada, yada. So, no dependence on this external sources of, of changes so that much as you, we have right you now. Were saying, you were saying you've pulled like basically GitHub repos from everything that's COVID-19 related. Are you pulling government data from government sites yet or is that something that's like lower priority? Well, the way, I mean, like we use GitHub as this proxy of other people who find sources, right? So we kind of cheated a little bit. 
but the, the idea is that like you, you scan the, the GitHub repos, if you have links in a GitHub repo, let's say to some governmental website that has a CSV file, for example, it will get ingested into our dataverse. I love it. So it's just it's eating like, all you know, the data. Well, I mean, like there are still like filtration, the tether we still pull off some some of the like not not what we need to pull in, etc. That's why we have data hub kind of figuring out and tweak the crawler. But you know, like right now we're still in the process of actually scanning the call GitHub because it's a huge like the GitHub itself is very big. And again, constantly people adding data to, to, to their repos, etc. But eventually, like if you want to search some data sets related to COVID-19, you go to datasetscoronavirus.org, do a search and see if it's there or not. And if it's not there, then probably it'll be like, it's not worth it to go to GitHub, search it again, because you will just search code base, not the actual data. So. I, th I think we're kind of we're wandering off topic let's be fair we're off topic but interesting topic all the same but um really good job there anton um malavika's dropped i think so she's going to go back to come back in a second i'm not completely sure we need her. welcome back malavika hey um, I, th I think we're done. You can summarize and end off if you want, but I, I don't know if there's anything else that needs to be done. All right. Um, I, I'm not sure what I missed. I think I noted the last thing I heard. Um, um, there... It's when it gets, when somebody, well, I don't know, someone's going to have to go back and uh, do the annotations. But yeah, we were t discussing a number of things, so it's probably going to end up. It'll have to be reread. Re I won't write it down. I should have been. I was just talking instead. Yeah, no problem. Um, all right, then. Um, any final thoughts or general points from anyone? If not, thanks, everyone, for your time. Have a good rest of your day. Keep being awesome, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.